Welcome. You are going to pray to stay in the race as we share scriptures, testimonies, and prayer with encouragement. Be bold, be strong, for our Lord God is with you. Hi, welcome to Pray to Stay in the Race. I'm LaTanya Boyce, and we thank you that you are clicking on to um to subscribe and also putting your responses. I'm getting responses back that I'm able to answer, letting us know that our labor is not in vain and that you're receiving some awesome word to add to your life that's going to help you stand to stay in the race. Amen. And so one of the topics I want to talk, uh, share a scripture dealing with uh, is trusting in God. It's going to be one of the six keys. It's key number four. Number the six keys that my guest, Deborah Osherman, is going to be sharing and talking about um, in her book. Uh, this is part two. Hi, Deb. How's it going, Debbie? Hello, Hello LaTanya. Thanks for so, having me back. Yes, always. And so um, the scripture that I want to open with it's coming over out of Joshua. You know, Joshua was the one who followed uh, after Moses. He was awesome with following Moses, obeying Moses, just leading the people to the promised land. And then it was time for him to take over. And I want to read this scripture, uh, different translations. Um, I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I would give them. So be strong, be courageous, be careful to obey the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or the left then you will be successful in everything you do to study <laughs> study this book of instruction continually meditate in it those over in Joshua 1 5 through 9 it's talking about meditate on it day and night be sure to obey everything and then going on oh and this will bring you prosper make you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong, be courageous, for you are the one God is with, with you wherever you go. I will not fail you. You hear what God's telling you, people? He's not going to fail us. Be strong and be courageous, for, for you will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors and give them that I would give them. So be strong and be courageous. Let us go in prayer. Father God, I praise you and I thank you that we, some trust in horses and chariots, but Lord, we trust in you. We trust that you will lead and guide us to where we need to be, what we need to do, and who we are becoming and who we are being. So, Lord, I thank you for the homes and the hearers of the word that we will speak today. It will fall on good ground. It will shift the atmosphere where they're at. Whatever they might be lacking, they will hear something today to add to who you are, are telling them that they are. So, Lord, we tell them and encourage them, be strong, be courageous. For the Lord thy God is with you. Amen. Amen. Well, Debbie, I am so excited. Um, and I have ordered my book. It hasn't gotten here, The Oil Man. Um, but it's coming. And so um, I wanted to ask you something. How, how did the Lord come to give you this writing project? We talked about the first one. This is your second one. How did this come about? Well, after I finished with my novel, um, I just needed to unwind. And so I, I did that. But the Lord knew that I needed help with my thinking because uh, pretty soon I was getting depressed 
and I didn't know why. I thought, why am I so depressed? You know, because I had a project to work on all that time, and it kept my mind going. Well, now uh-huh. I don't have it anymore. So now what do I do? You know. Um, so the Lord was wanting to give me something to help me to change my thinking. Yes. Well, you know, if we don't have something, a goal or something before us, we fall into idle thinking and we start um, being in that world of negativity instead of whose mind is stayed on the Lord or the business of the Lord. Uh, he will perfect those things. Yes. Yes. Um, I had a problem with daydreaming. Um, you know, you do a lot of dreaming when you're writing a novel and that's fine. <clears throat> but my daydreaming would become negative. Oh, and okay. Would turn into complaining, presuming, coveting, wanting things I didn't have, self-pity. And it would usually end up, the bottom line, Matanya, was unforgiveness. Oh, okay. Usually okay. at the person. And so there were six things the Lord showed me I was doing, and it was those things. I'll just name them again. Daydreaming, complaining, presuming, coveting, self-pity, and unforgiveness. Okay, for those that might have been writing it down, can you tell us one more time what those six things are? Sure will. Daydreaming. Daydreaming, okay. Complaining. Presuming, coveting, self pity. Oh, that now that is truly going forth strong in the world today. Yeah. Go on. The last one, unforgiveness. Um, with you saying these these things, I was thinking about the children of Israel because when, um, when, um. Moses turned it over to Joshua. That's all the people were doing. They were complaining. They complained while they were in Egypt. Then they planned, complained while they were in the wilderness. And <laughs> they didn't make it out. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I won't jump ahead. <laughs> that complaining gets you into problems, serious exactly. problems. That wilderness journey is such a good study. And it was written as an example for us. So we've got to learn from it. Well, these thoughts really affected me, and I was either sad or mad, you know, and that was about it. Yes. So they were like, he showed me those are the keys to the door of sadness or madness, and do you want to live there? Because those keys are going to get you in. And so after a while, I felt like I was living in a dungeon, you know. Yes. Well, this is like living in the basement, and the Lord said, face it, it's a dungeon. That's really where it is. And let me let me say something right there. When you said that, he said, "Do you want to?" You know, it's your choice because that's, that's not right. where he wants us. Exactly. He, you know, and so we have a choice. Not we only when a- we we took on salvation, but now we have a choice to live in this world. What do we want in the world? That's right. He so you was that- in a dungeon, huh? <laughs> yeah, my thoughts were actually, they have the power to move me somewhere, and they were moving me away from the Lord. And Jesus. so this depression that I was battling was really of my own doing. Uh, mm-hmm. For myself, at least, I had to take uh, responsibility for my part. When I right. take responsibility, I do my part, the Lord does his part too. Okay. It's a it's a covenant that we're in. We're in a covenant with the Lord, you know? Right. And if we don't do our part, God isn't gonna move. <laughs> right. Um, Psalm 34, 13 says, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Because you see, the enemy takes advantage of our thoughts. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. before we even say those things, um, those the thoughts are there and the enemy will take advantage of it. So 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into every captivity thought. to the mm-hmm. obedience of Christ. We have to take every thought captive. Every thought. 
Can I add, I, I also looked up, when you sent me these scriptures, I also looked up, uh, it, I like the tr passionate translation too, mm -hmm. a and it brings it even more simpler and even stronger. It says, do you, for Psalms 34, 12 uh, through 13, do you want to live a long life, a good life, enjoy the beauty that fills each day? then never speak a lie or allow wicked words to come from your mouth. I mean, that is plain like wow. the other ones. Isn't that something? That's so he good. tells us, keep it out of your mouth because what you're speaking is going to be. Yes, it's like our words. I've always said <laughs> that they are seeds that we plant, but they're also a key that unlocks a door. Yes. So which door do you want to go One through? open. It's That's exactly. Right. That's right. I also call it thinking in the flesh. Our thoughts are either in the spirit or in the flesh. And so yes. I want to think in the spirit. Okay. Yes. Hey, are you sure you haven't been watching our podcast? I mean, um, Bishop and, and, and Pastor Charles Bennett, because... You, we're hitting a lot I, of I what you watch occasionally, but, but <laughs> yeah. honestly, this is but your book own. was before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. But he was, showing, God. he was showing me that our thoughts need to be a constant conversation with God. That's There's good. There's no such thing as a, just a conversation just with myself. Uh, right. If it is, then I get myself into a lot of trouble that way. I've got to let my thoughts be toward God. And that's why it says bring every thought into captivity. Captivity. Another thing he showed me is that if I don't take those thoughts into captivity, they will take me into captivity. Okay. One of All the right. Other. We have and authority over that. Those, those, those thoughts turn into strongholds of your mind. That's where we yeah. have to take captive every stronghold, those things up planted, lying in our mind, our thoughts. Amen. Amen. And then another one is Psalm 131, uh, verses 1 and 2, and I call this my caution light, like okay. a, just like a bright uh, yellow flashing light. Lord, my heart, excuse me, Lord, my heart is not haughty, which means proud. Proud. Nor my eyes lofty, arrogant. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. What a difference. What a contrast. Yes. Sometimes yes. our depression gets us, comes from being so proud and thinking we just know it all. That comes mm -hmm. from presuming. That's one of the six is presuming that I just know it all. I just know why yeah. somebody did something. I just know. Right. And that's where that pride comes. And so this psalm, it's a very short psalm. It's a bright yellow flashing light. Careful, danger, you're getting yes. too proud. And do you know, with that being said, that's exactly how um, Lucifer got kicked out. He thought he knew everything was greater than God, and he didn't need anybody, but wanted everybody to follow him. And some of them did follow him to the wrong that's place. Right. <laughs> but that I, yes, yes. Who do you want? Who is leading you? Who is yeah. leading you? You self cannot lead yourself, Jesus. Yes. So what was that? Can you read that Psalms for us again? That was it, the short one you said? Psalm 131, verses 1 and 2. Okay. Do you want me to read it again? Please. Lord, my heart is not haughty, proud, nor my eyes lofty, arrogant. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely mm. I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. I'm no longer desperate for food. I am growing. I am maturing. I don't Hallelujah. have to cry every time I think I, I need something. Mm. So it, it's a maturity. Mm -hmm. 
So, Debbie, <laughs> you said that God gave you something to change your thinking. Uh, what what did God give you to change? He gave me six things to replace the six things that I was doing. Um, so before I tell you what those six things were, Latanya, picture yourself as a seven-year-old child, okay? That now perfect that child. <laughs> very, yeah, perfect child. That's a very teachable age. Yes. And Jesus gives you a large key ring with six keys on them, okay? Uh -huh. Now, the keys are all different, but they all unlock the same door. Okay. And Jesus is behind that door. And so you are going to go practice opening the door with those keys so that you can get in and then you can be with Jesus, okay? That's the mm -hmm. object is to get through the door so that you can be with Jesus, okay? Can I say so, one thing? Yeah, yes. When you said the child, the seven-year-old, I can just imagine a seven-year-old when they're trying to unlock the door, they're, they're expecting to see something great behind that door. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so as we come, we're expecting God to do something. Yes, I just, very good. Woo, hallelujah. Is, you see how he's putting anticipation into this. Yes. 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 Okay. So the the keys, I'll just uh, name them off randomly here. Rejoicing, thanking, trusting, blessing, praising, and forgiving. Jesus calls the door the door of gladness. In the dungeon, I was either sad or mad. And that was a bad yes. bad. Yes. But gladness is that joy that sustains us, that he wants Hallelujah. us to have. Mm -hmm. And gladness is the result of using these keys. Okay. Um, is there any order to these keys? There is, but an interesting thing is that he didn't give them to me in order because he didn't want to be legalistic about it. <clears throat> he wanted me to explore and just look at them. And um, what I did was um, I wrote them out on uh, index cards and I was giving them out to my friends because I was showing them, okay, this is what I'm writing about now. Okay. This is what I'm doing. This is what the Lord is doing. And that's all I had. I was, you know, journaling in my, my journal and all these index cards. And then I just write out these six things. So I did it several times and I was getting it into my head. These are the six things that um, he wants us to do that, um, that I need in my head. But now I'll give them to you in order. And then we'll talk about each one. The first one is blessing. Oh, Number okay. two is praising. Okay. Three, thanking. Four, trusting. Five, forgiving. And six, rejoicing. So I want to, I have a question for you. So the, uh, so when he first gave these to you about how long was it before he now then put them in order before I ask you my question? That was a couple of weeks. Okay. Because this is what the way that you got them, you had, because you was in that darkness for so long, you had to start rejoicing to break the darkness. And then the thinking, the, the thinking, thanking him that, okay, I'm in a dungeon right now, but I thank you, Lord, you're going to show me out. And then that's how that trust began to develop back into God again, so that the blessings could come as you're praising him. Now you're ready to forgive whatever. But anyways, that was oh, just my thought. <laughs> could be. I would have to go back to my prayer journal. And this was a while ago. I mean, when I yes. 
finished with the oil man. The oil man's actually been out a couple of years. Okay. And so um, this was um, at least a year ago. And so mm -hmm. I don't remember what the process was. But yes, I looked at each one and, uh, you know, each one has its own uh, blessing to it. But, but you know, my, um, I, I said that because when I think of this, I, for some reason, it popped to me about when I was going through my challenge of cancer. And um, that that was a dungeon. But I know I had to I had to learn how to rejoice in that and even keep thanking God, even though I didn't know what the future was going to be. I had to thank God right then, you know, that, Lord, I'm trusting you. And I had to keep praising him through the chemo, through the through the radiation, through the infusions, all the stuff. All these things, I, I I had to keep doing that. And then forgiving, I had to keep forgiving um, anyone he would reveal to me who I might need to forgive so that I could start rejoicing over that individual. Uh, exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it just kept taking me to different levels. and Well, and that's it, why having the keys on a key ring is so wonderful because you can choose any key that you, you need all the time. And there is a freedom in that. There's an order to these, but it's not a legalistic it's, order. Yes. But I um, man. you got to get your key out and, and decide, you know, and use it. Yes. Yes. So let's go to your key number one and talk about blessing. All right. Blessing. Now, David and other scripture writers exhort us to speak and sing blessings to the Lord specifically. Can you imagine how that blesses our Lord to hear our blessings to him? It's I compare it to kingdom language. That's what I call it. Blessing the Lord is where his attention and my attention meet. So there are many scriptures that just say, bless the Lord. There are many blessings that we can speak on each other, but this one is particularly for the Lord, and it gets our attention on him, obviously. Yes. Um, yes. So a good, good example is Psalm 103, oh, verses yes. 1 and 2. Okay. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that, all is, that within is within me. Bless his holy name. name. Bless yes. the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then verses 3 through 5 list those benefits, and they're fantastic. David was telling himself to bless the Lord, and it's the best thing we can do when we're mm -hmm. in tough circumstances. Mm -hmm. So this could mean, you know, singing a song of praise, but you're saying, bless the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, especially when those negative thoughts come, um, because our Lord has provided kingdom language that defeats the enemy and keeps us in his presence. So that's our starting point. Bless the Lord. Yes. Okay. Praise God. The creator, because he's our creator. Why wouldn't we start with the creator? That's right. The second key is praising the Lord for who he is. He is. Mm -hmm. This key tells us to remember his glorious character. Scripture is full of word pictures that capture his nature, his personality, and his glory. And uh, so I chose a few examples. Psalm 18, verse 2, the, rock, the Lord is my rock and fortress, my deliverer, my strength. Psalm 86, 5, for you, Lord, are good, ready to forgive, abundant in mercy. Psalm 84, verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And then, Latanya, I was reading about the uh, Jesus and the disciples on the Sea of Galilee when mm -hmm. Jesus fell asleep in the boat. Okay, so they woke him up. They said, "Oh, we're going to die. You know, you've got to do something." And so he calms the wind. He says, "Peace be still." The wind and the waves cease. Now, what did the disciples ask each other? Did they ask, how did he do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. They right. said, who is this? Is this that he who can control? Yeah. The winds and the waves. Wave. Okay. Yes. Who he is. 
is a much more important question. And so that time they asked the right question. Yeah. Who he is is so important. What he does points to who he is. So that's why the second key is praising the Lord for who he is. You see, when I do that, I'm edifying myself. I'm telling myself the truth, not about me or anybody else. I'm telling myself the truth about who Jesus is. And uh, it's very powerful. You know, and that keeps him in first position so that it's not the things or us, but it's him that we're praising. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Key number three, thanking. Thanking Hallelujah. him for what he's done. Okay. Psalm 18 has so many things I took from verses 16 to 20. I just picked out phrases. So listen to these phrases, and, and David is telling us what the Lord did for him. Okay. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me. The Lord was my support. He brought me into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me. Psalm 30, verse 11. You have turned my morning into dancing. Into dancing. Yes. Hallelujah. Or 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So then how about this? You could just say he created the world out of nothing. He created us. He sent his son to die for us. He was resurrected. He ascended. And he sent us the Holy Spirit. You could go on and on. What did he do for you today? What did he do yesterday? So Amen. There's just some, it's just wide open. So thank him. Key number three, thank him for what he's done. It's endless. Okay. Now, key number four. This is the one we were talking about and what you started with. Yes. This is trusting. Trusting. Trusting Trust the Lord. Lord. So we've laid a foundation, see, with who he is and what he's done. Mm -hmm. So based on who he is and what he's done, the Lord now asks us, do you think maybe you can trust me? Right. <laughs> this is how he builds our trust. He doesn't just come to us and, you know, kind of hit us over the head and say, well, trust me. No, he works with us. He builds mm -hmm. our trust. Um, so, I can only go ahead. Can I just wanted to say, dealing with that, how I opened up. So he had been with, um, Joshua had been with Moses for, for, for a while, 40 days and 40, 40 years or 40 nights. Um, anyways, 40s of everything. 40 years, and, yes. Yeah. And so he was learning who this God, the creator was and saw what he did that when it came time, he knew he could trust this living God for how he did with Moses. So it's with us as we've been um, blessing and praising and thank giving him um, right where we're at and seeing what all God took us through and brought us out. Then we too now should be able to say, Lord, I trust you. I am trusting in you because I know the record you have done in my life. That's right. That's how he builds. That's how we grow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Being the intimate. Hebrew, yes. The Hebrew word for trust is kasa. It's spelled C-H-A-S-A-H. -A -A kasa. To make someone a refuge. And so Ruth is a very good example of that. She asked Boaz to take her under his wing which means literally spread the corner of your garment over me. Mm. And she knew to do that because Naomi instructed her. Okay, yes. so here yes. again, Ruth had the choice to obey or not to obey. So this trust calls us into obedience. There has to come a point where we do what we're told to do. Right. And um, she did. Ruth obeyed and look at what happened. Happened. You know? Oh, my God. Yes. So Found her husband. Yes. 
found her she, husband, but began the the le legacy of our Christ. The messianic that, one. Yes, yes. Participated in that. Yes, her so. obedience. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. Now, there are other words for trust in Scripture that I discovered, and this was a really fun discovery. Um, this is from Psalm 37. All of these words are from Psalm 37, Psalm 37. verses 3 through 8. Just Any special translation? These. Is there? It was New, New King James. Version. New King James, okay. These are just words that I found. Wait, taste, hmm. delight, mm -hmm. commit, rest, yes. peace, forsake, hope rejoice be glad those are all signs of trust and all these words imply obedience praise god they in this uh, whole section of verses three through eight they show us two things they show us our obedience and god's faithfulness mm -hmm. so here's the phrases that show um our part this is our obedience here trust in the lord and do good Dwell in the land, mm -hmm. feed on his faithfulness, yes. delight yourself in the Lord, commit your way to the Lord, rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him, do not fret, cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Hallelujah. Now, there are benefits, and that's the Lord's part, also from this passage. We get to feed on his faithfulness. He will give us the desire of our hearts. Our hearts. He will bring it to pass. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Now, I have to insert in there that, that um, the desires, he's going to give us our desires, but we have to make sure we understand it's really the desires of the Lord, because as we're putting the word of God into us, we become wanting more and more of what he wants, what which he is wants. his desire. So that's where people mess up. Well, they say, well, I asked God and he didn't give it to me. Well, is it, you know what I'm, so I want to make sure that the people that are hearing and viewing understand these desires are really coming from being intimate with our Lord so that you can have the same mind and thoughts that he has. And he's going to give you everything that you desire. That's right. Comes from hey. that intimacy, that bonding, spending time. With yes. Him. yes. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. So the bottom line for trust is that it means we do our part. He does his part. He does his part. Yes our obedience and his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. So was that, did we have one, another one? Another? Yes, we have another wait, one. two more. Okay. Yes. Key number five is forgiving. Forgiving. Now, <clears throat> forgiving implies, of course, that this is for everyone around us, okay? Now that we have, um, we bless the Lord, we praise him for who he is, we mm -hmm. thank him for what he's done, we trust him. Now we take this step, and if there's people around us that we need to forgive, we yes. do that. And we might need forgiveness from someone else. It works both ways. But forgiveness is something, or excuse me, unforgiveness is something that can separate us from the Lord. This is a tricky one. It's something that the enemy can use us to get us back into that dungeon again. Yeah. But here we have the key of forgiveness to get us out. Well, over there in Matthew 6, where, where Jesus is um, teaching the disciples how to pray, uh, he tells us, you know, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And all the way down at the bottom, it says, if you forgive those who trespass against you, then our Father will forgive you who trespass against them you, 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 for your trespasses. So that is a very, and we have to forgive ourselves. I know I have to forgive myself of yes. things when I was a single mama or things 
that I didn't do or, you know, we have to forgive ourselves so God can flood us with his promises and love. This is part of the holiness. He says, I am holy and I want you to be holy. Be holy. Too. Yes, ma'am. And so I forgive you. You must forgive others. He's teaching us his ways, how forgiveness Hallelujah. works. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, in Ephesians 1, verse 7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. And so I got to thinking about his blood, his royal blood is what, that's the, it's just like a picture of forgiveness. If you picture him on the cross shedding his blood, it's that forgiveness. Praise and so God. I'm thinking about a heart. A heart is what pumps the blood, okay? Well, for me to be forgiving, it doesn't work, Latanya, for me to hit myself over the head with my Bible and say, be forgiving, be forgiving. It doesn't work that way. Right. So ask the Lord, what is a forgiving heart? What does a forgiving heart look like? And I, um, I like to call that an anatomy. We're looking at anatomy and anatomy of a forgiving heart. And I found in Isaiah 57, 15. Mm -hmm. Yes. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy places with him who has a contrite and humble spirit mm -hmm. to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And then Paul says something similar, Colossians 3, uh, 12 and 13. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone Literally. has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Uh, yes, Lord. Amen. So let's compare now. We've come a long way. Let's compare. Let's look at the anatomy of an unforgiving. How about complaining, presuming, coveting, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. self pity it usually starts, for me anyway, it starts with daydreaming. So instead of daydreaming, let's bless the Lord. It keeps Hallelujah. Us the dungeon. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And keep praising. Are you, ready to go? Keep, Are you ready to go to the sixth key or did you want to talk anymore? Um, well, I'm just, I don't know about other people who's watching or viewing, but I'd rather... I'd rather be using my keys to unlock the light, the word, the power, the, the yes. praise, the beauty, the thanksgiving, the unforgiveness Absolutely. becoming forgiveness, and just being able to live. Um, too many of our people are choosing to, to live in the darkness because they want self-pity. They want you to feel sorry for them. But God says, hey, you don't have to live in there. Come on that's up. Right. Come on that's up. Right. I think oh. that's why our world is on fire right now. We've got yeah. people, dungeon dwellers, but just yes. live in the basement and just carry their anger around. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. It's and heartbreaking. But you know what? We can't make people get out of the dungeon. They have to get out themselves. So, yeah, okay. I'm ready to go into rejoicing your All six right. key. Right. Yes, rejoicing. Okay. okay. There's a, uh, well, Psalm 70, uh, verse 4, I think it's, yeah, it's the first part yes. of uh, that verse. Let all those who seek you rejoice Joyce, and be glad. be glad. He wants us to rejoice and be glad. So look at how far we've come the lord has taken us from a lifestyle of basement living and brought us into his presence no more daydreaming yes. or complaining or all of that now we bless the lord we praise him we thank him so we must rejoice this is like the the exclamation point you know at the end 
in and Psalm you know 40. on that before you go to the next one on psalm 74 the next part of that it says and let those who love your salvation say continually let god be magnified yes continually let God be magnified. Continually. We've got to continually. His praise shall continually be in, be in my mouth. Yes. To continue. Yes. Ooh. Thank you. Psalm 5, verse 11. But let all those who rejoice, excuse me, but let, the, let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Psalm 89, verse 16 is one of my favorites. Praise God. In your name, they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness, they are exalted. Just picture that, Latonya. The Lord wants to exalt us. He wants to lift us up from the basement to his presence. Yes. He's transforming us and moving us from the power of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. It's power and it's something only he can do, but he's faithful to do it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, glory. We have one more verse in that Psalm 84, verse 10. And this... This is a verse that I had read so many times, but after he'd given me these keys, you know, yes. I thought, gee, I, what am I? Am I a greeter? Am I a, a doorman or, or what here, you know? Yes. And I love this verse. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Now, in my study Bible, doorkeeper means stand at the door or stand at the threshold. Yes, he yes. Me to help people into the door of gladness. My job is to help them use the keys of blessing, praising, thanking, trusting, forgiving, and rejoicing. Because th there's really nothing better than living in his presence. Mm-hmm. And when you said that about the gate, it reminds me of when the disciples was at the beautiful gate and they told the lame man, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, Jesus, I give to you. And that's what they did. They would sound alarms at the gates in the back there in the, in the days. But listen to this at your 84 Psalms, 84, 10. In the mm -hmm. translation, it says, for just as one day of intimacy with you is like a thousand days of joy rolled into one, I'd rather stand at the threshold in front of the gate of beautiful, ready to go in and worship my God, than to live my life without you in the most beautifulest palace of the wicked. So you could have the most beautifulest home. But you could be a dungeon if the presence of the Lord isn't there. You could have all the money, but you could still be poor in spirit if the presence of the Lord. So it's not in things. It, our value is in who do we have and trust and live and worship and praise. Yes, mm -hmm. and he inhabits the praises of his people. Of people. So he comes to where you are. And yes. yes. There, yes, there you Lord. Go. So the the keys have several scriptures. So so we're praising God that all these scriptures we shared, Debbie, somebody got something from those scriptures as we are wrapping our podcast to a. You know, when you're having fun, you know, it just seems like time goes so fast. Yes. But um, what would you like to end with, and then close us in prayer and Thank you for being on our podcast. Pray to stay in the race. I, I'm going back to the scripture. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad. I think there are many people seeking. And the good news is you will find him and you will rejoice and be glad. He wants us to have that gladness. Let yes. Take your sadness and your madness and and I used to call it, I've been hadness, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, 
they all rhyme, but they're very different. And uh, that gladness, it may not sound very exciting, mm -hmm. but I found that it really is. <laughs> because yes. it's that sustaining joy that uh, keeps us in his presence. And thank you for the keys and make sure you put the right key in the right keyhole to <laughs> obtain what you're wanting. That's that intimacy with the Lord. He will lead and guide us into all truth and um, the door of gladness. Thank you, Debbie Oshman, looking for your book. Uh, and it will be coming out and be don't where? Know. And actually, LaTanya, it's you're still working. Project. And I don't know. I haven't even written the last chapter yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, a, I know as far as, as a key number five, but um, I'm not sure what it's going to become if it's just a, a teaching in a loose leaf notebook. I have no idea. It may become a published book. Uh, I have to wait on the Lord to find out, but I well, still when, to share it with you. Whenever it's finished, you have an open door to come and reveal to us. What did God say? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> amen. Yes, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. May you. Pray. you want me to pray now? Okay. Yes, please. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for the thank you. Thank you for the light. Thank you for the joy. And I ask for anyone out there who is in darkness and has given up on themselves, Father, and maybe given up on you. Oh, Father, I pray that they would reach out Thank one more you. and praise you. I ask that they would reach out and take a hold oh, of you yeah. because I know that you're faithful, Father. I've seen it so many times. I thank you for your faithfulness. I ask that you surround those who need you at this time, Thank Father. you, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, on the count of three, we're going to say pray, pray to stay in the race. race. One, two, three. Pray, pray to, to stay, stay in the race. In the race.